Scholar IT Solutions is a balanced staffing company developed by a group of professionals with an experience of over 18 plus years in staffing solutions. With years of quality and committed high-end application development and staffing experience, we have become experts at delivering the right fit, the first time. We will be glad to be your last stop and provide you with the perfect solution to your requirements. Follow Scholar IT Solutions LinkedIn page. For more updates, follow our social media pages. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's seminar. Good evening, sir. Before I start my seminar, I want to tell you that we will be having seminar on SQL joint types on SIPs and normalization on 29th of August 2021. It will be at 8.30 p.m. IST and 8 a.m. EST. We will just and as you all know that this session is being organized by Scholar IT Solutions. Scholar IT Solutions is a group of professionals with technical and domain expertise, and they have a robust team of experienced people working in many companies all over the US. And Scholar IT Solutions is one of the best companies in the US. And I would like you to follow Social IT on Facebook and LinkedIn. So today's agenda is that we will be discussing about the Oracle Data Guard, its history, its types, its mode. We will see about different background processes which were introduced, and we will do the hands-on on Data Guard. So Data Guard, what is actually a Data Guard? Data Guard is a service that creates, maintains, manage, and monitor one or more standby databases and which enables the Oracle database to survive a disaster or a corruption, data corruption. Oracle Data Guard gives you high availability, data protection, disaster recovery for the enterprise databases. And with Data Guard, we can improve the performance of our primary or the production database by offloading the backup and the reporting operations. Okay, if we just see about the Oracle Data Guard history, so in version 7, the Oracle introduced Oracle Standby, and during this phase, the redo log files used to be copied manually and database used to be recovered manually. Then in 8i, automatic archive log stripping was introduced and MRP process was introduced. Then when we work in the Oracle 9i, the standby database renamed to Data Guard. And we used to have data guard broker. We can perform the switch over and a delay option was introduced at that time. In Oracle 10G, real time apply was given to us and there was a fast state fill failover introduced. There was a concept of flashback database and guaranteed restore points. In Oracle 11G, active data guard and snapshot standby were introduced. We have a concept of arm and incremental backups with the block change tracking files, which can be applied on the standby. In Oracle 12T, multi-instance redo apply parallel recovery, multi-instance recovery was introduced. And it was a support of diagnostic was done, tuning packs can be applied and you can view the AWR reports. Then we have the 18C in which we have the recovery standby database from service was introduced. We have the global temporary tables, which was introduced at that time. And we have the, in 19C, you have an active data guard in which you can apply the DML on the standby. And we have the automatic standby recovery through the reset logs. So in Oracle data guards, we have, uh, we have a physical standby, we have a logical standby. And the physical standby can be broken down into two more things. One is the active standby, and second is the snapshot standby. When we talk about the Oracle Data Guard modes, we can have three modes in which we can keep our Oracle Data Guard. One is the maximum protection, one is the maximum availability, and one is the maximum performance. 
When we talk about the maximum protection, it is in sync and A form. And the quality of that is that it ensures that the transactions on the primary commits only after it is applied on the standby. And if there is no standby, the primary is gonna hung in this case. And there are no data loss in case of maximum protection mode. Then we have the maximum availability, which is also the sync and air form. And this also ensures that the transactions on the primary get committed only after it is being applied on the standby database. But here, uh, the good point is that if the standby is not available due to any outage or network issues, the primary will not be impacted, the primary will not get hung, and it will, you can continue working there. And usually there is no data loss in this case also. We have a maximum performance. In today's um, demo session, we will be working on the maximum performance, and that is async and no affirm. And here, the primary database transactions will not wait to be applied or replicated on the standby. Thus, it is improving the performance of the uh, production or the primary side. It does not have to wait, it does not get hungs. And yeah, there is a significant data transfer of data loss in this case. Okay, so as you can see on the screen now, that's the Oracle Data Gift Dot architecture. And you can see the multiple background processes there. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see that there is a primary database with multiple background processes like log writer is there, archiver is there, LNS is there. And on the right side, that is a standby database with its background processes like RFS is there, MRP is there. We will discuss about each and every background processes and how things works here. So let's start. I used to it for the very first thing when we have Oracle standby database, as I discussed before also. So in this scenario, all the database transactions that were available here uh, used to go to the redo log buffers, and from there, the log writer used to write them to the online redo log files, and from there, it used to go to the archive, archive area, archive redo logs. And here, yeah. the archive logs were shipped manually to the standby side, and there, we used to manually recover the database. So, this is the version 7i. Yeah. Now, let's go to next version which was so in the seven i as you see that it was all manual uh, work we have to manually ship all those re archive redo log files and we have to manually apply them so in or uh, in the latest uh, eight i version oracle introduced the mrp process that is managed recovery process and there was a rfs process so in in this scenario the archive from the from the production on the primary sites the archive logs were uh, automatically uh, shipped to the standby side, and there was an MRP process which used to apply those archive review logs onto the standby. In this scenario, what we have discussed just now, in this scenario, there is a problem. And the problem is that if you have online review log files got corrupted or they are lost, so there is a problem. So if there is no online redo log files available, so there will be a data loss because no data will be shipped to the archiver uh, redo log files on the primary side, and similarly, it will not be go to the archive to the primary side, and so all the data which is in the online redo log file will be lost. So Oracle introduced standby redo logs for this concept. So that standby redo logs is what is all the information which is there in the online redo log files will be copied to the standby redo logs. So this feature was introduced so that if the, if you have the loss of online redo log files, still we can save the data. During the time of as, as, uh, standby redo logs, a background process, which is called as LNS, log writer network server was introduced. And the work of LNS was to copy the redo entries or the redo data from the redo log buffer or from the online redo log files and it used to give it to the RFS process, the remote file server process, and it used to copy the data into the standby redo log files. It, even if there is no online redo log files or there is the loss of that, it's still the data from the redo buffers, log writer here, and you can copy that to the standby redo log files. And using the real apply time, it used to be applied on the standby data. 
let's talk about the redo transmissions one of the way of transmitting the the data uh, redo is using the archive process so we have the archivers with us we have a multiple you can set multiple archivings so in this example also we will see there is a log archive desk path which is being set on the primary side and there is a log archive desk 2 which is being set for the standby side so data will go to the standby using this log archive desk 2 when we talk about the log writer process that we have to talk about the archival process the second way is about the log writer process in this scenario what happens there is a two ways one is the, the sync mode in the when there whenever the database will be in the sync mode the lns will copy the data from the redo buffers and it will go to the rfs and it will be applied on the standby logs and in this scenario the data will not be committed on the primary side and the log writer will keep on waiting for the acknowledgement. So the data which is going from here to the standby redo log files will be copied here, applied on the standby side, and then uh, acknowledgement will go back on the log writer. Then the data will be committed on the primary side. That is the function of sync mode. The second is the async mode. In this scenario, the uh, in this scenario the, the the log writers and the lns are independent it does not matter to him from uh, whether the data is being copied to the standby logs or not so it will keep on continue the the primary database will keep on continue working while on the standby database it will copy the data similarly that uh, from C onwards, you will be able to see two new background processes. One is the NSS, that is the network server sync process. Whenever the, the database is uh, set in the sync mode, that will be used. And there's a second process called NSA, which is the network server async process. So it's for async part. Let's see how it works. So if your database is being set in the maximum performance mode, so NSA will work and it is asynchronous. There is no acknowledgement being transferred here. So data will be copied from the online redo log files using the NSA to the RFS and it will be copied to the standby redo logs and then it will be applied. So that is the case of async mode, which is being done by NSA background process. And we have an NSS, which is the network server sync process. So in case of sync, the data from the redo buffers is read, read directly and then it will be transferred to the RFS and applied here. And this acknowledgement is being required. So this is the both I'm trying to show the both how it works, NSS and NSA here. Then there is a concept of log delay. So in case of log delay, if there is if you have set log delay on the standby side, the data will be read from the archive logs and applied to the delay using the MRB process on the standby database. There is the concept of lag or gap. Whenever there is a network outage and the archives could not be copied here, so RFS process will talk with the archiver on the primary side and it will try to resolve the gaps, which all, all those archives which are not uh, reached to this primary side will be fetched again. So this was the complete architecture of the data guard. So once again, we can see that on the primary uh, side the database, the rewrite transactions are coming up here. The data goes to the redo log buffers, and from there, the log writer writes them to the online redo log files. And during this phase only, the NSS can pick up the data from the redo buffers and send it directly to the RFS, and it will be applied to the standby redo log files. And here, the redo will be uh, applied on the standby database using the MRP process in the real time fashion. The second is the A uh, NSA, in which it is the async. The data will be read from the online redo log files and will go to the RFS and will be applied on the standby and similarly applied on the uh, standby database. If there is a gap, so RFS we can talk to the archiver process on the primary side and it will resolve the gap resolution. Okay, so let's do some hands-on on the data guard. So today's session we will be working on the creation of the standby database. We will see to create the standby database. So here I just want to let you know that first of all we have to check which mode is like whether because for this the database should be in the archive mode we should have archiving on. So we will check whether the database is in archive mode or not. 
then we will enable the force logging on the primary side. We will add the standby due to log files on the primary side. We are adding them on the primary side. At this moment, it won't be used, but they will, they will be used during the time of switchover. We will add the TNS entry. We will, we will add the TNS entry. Here in this example, I will just take an example of an ORCL database on the primary side, and there will be a, a standby database with a name called ORCL DR, which will be created. The same way we will have a listener entries, the listener will be running. We can check the, whether we, these two databases are uh, pingable or not. Then we will make some changes in the primary side. We will make some parameter changes there in which we will set the unique name. We will configure the log underscore archive underscore config. That is DG config. We will uh, configure that. We will have the log archive desk uh, parameters set up. We will have the log archive desk too. We will set the false servers and the false client, and we will set the standby file management to auto. There is a parameter called DB file name convert and the log file name convert. So when the data files are being created or the standby is being created, the data files will be renamed to that location. And during this, we will be copying the password file, TNS name files, listener files to the standby side from the production side. And we will create a P file on the standby that will only have one parameter called DB name. We have to create few of the required directories on the standby side. We will see that. Then we will use this duplicate command to create the standby. So let's move to things as activity life. Okay, so just give me a second, friends. Okay, so the screens, the four screens that you can see on the are actually on the top side. This is a primary database running up. So as you can see here, we have a OSL database running with us. And uh, we have a database named OSCL, which is in read write mode. It's a primary database. And we have to create a, a standby database. We will see that. So on the, this is Shweb Mac 2. And here we will have, we will be trying to create a standby database here. You don't have any running database here. Nothing is running here. So we will be seeing how to create a standby here. So let's go start by start here, how the standby database is creation. So first thing is that you have to check the archive log mode. So let's go on the, let's go on the primary side and we will see. So you can see the database is actually in the archive mode. So archiving is enabled. Then we will see how whether the database is in the forced logging mode or not, we will see, check out that. So there's a command select post logging log mode from VDOR database and it says, yes, it is post logging. If it was not enabled, you can enable that using the command alter database force logging. Then we have to check whether we have standby database created on this uh, primary database or not. Okay, so you have, uh, three standby database created here. So you can, it's always needed. It won't be used at that this time, but it will be used during the switch over activity on the primary side. So we have checked three things here. Then you have to see the parameters entry of the TNS names. Let me show you that. Okay, you can see that there is a database ORCL, which is running on a database called ShwebMac. On, sorry, on the server Shwave Mac 1, and we have a OSCL data uh, DR which will be running on Shwave Mac 2. Similarly, you will configure the listeners part. You will see the listeners setting here. So the listener is that there is a pro listener called listener underscore primary, okay, which is which will be serving the database called OSCL and OSCL DR. Okay, so 
we can just check if the TNS string is working for us or not. So TNS string for ORCL is working fine here. We have to copy the password file, TNS name files, and the listener file to the standby side. So I'm just showing you one simple command like this. We can FTP. We will FTP the pass. This is the aura. PW or a ORCL, that is the password file for me. I'm going to copy this to the standby side. 102 is my standby IP, which is on this post. You can see here. Similarly, we will be copying the TNS names to the server. I'm sorry, I did it wrong. Need to be copied here. So, similarly, we will be copying the TNS names and the Listener entry here. So if I come to my location, we have the listener here and the TNS change here. Let's see the manual which entries are here. The DNS names we have the same, which is the ORCL for us. The ORCL which is on Shave One, ORCL VR, the, the standby which will be on Shave Mac Two. So the listener entries we have a st listener underscore standby which is running here on the standby side. So let's see which is whether the DNS, the listener is running or not. Okay, so there is a listener with a name called listener under standby is running. Okay, so there is a listener running on the standby side, which will be serving to ORCL and ORCL DR. Let's check on the primary side whether we have any listener running up there or not. Okay, there is a listener with a name called listener underscore primary. Let's see. The status of this, yes, okay, this is working here. Okay, so next thing is that we have to create a P file on the standby side. So you will have to create a P file. In my case, I have created this init ORCLDR and ORA. Let's see what is the content of this file. As I told you, there is only one parameter called DB name ORCL. Okay. You have to create the required folders on the standby side. So let's create all those folders here. So these are the few folders that need to be created on the standby side. Finally, we will check the TNS strings that whether we have TNS ping the ORCL to the primary side and TNS ping ORCL DR to my server. Then on the primary side, we will start the database using the P file that I have just created in the no mount mode. So first of all, we will set the set parameter. Then we will start the database using the P file that I have created with only one single DB name parameter. On the right side, I have opened the alerts. Okay, so now let me duplicate the database, the command called, there's a command called rmen target, you will give the username and the password of the primary site, then the auxiliary database user password for the data guard site. 
So as you can see, it says connected to the target database ORCL, and you have the connected to the auxiliary database ORCL not mounted. And then we will copy. We will run the command. Let me just run it for you. A duplicate script command here. So it will. We will be allocating few channels here. P1, P2, P3, P4 are the channels. It will allocate the auxiliary channel S1, and we are duplicating the target database for the standby from active database using the SP file here. There is a convert uh, value that is the ORCL and ORCL DR. The database name is ORCL DR. ORCL, I'm sorry, and the DB unique name. In the case of standby database, the DB unique name will be the different, while the DB name will be the same. Then there is the DB file name convert, log file name convert, and the log archive process falls up. All these are parameters that we set here. So just let's wait for a few minutes. So we have the Oracle instance started here. Now the backup is being taken of the control file here. Now the database backup is being taken from the production database. My data files are being kept in the U01 app Oracle or data ORCL in the production. It is being kept in the ORCL folder. So as you can see them here on the production side. Okay, so my script is complete. Let me come out here. Let me log into my database. So as you can see here, now the database is ORCL, which is in mounted mode. The DB unique name is the ORCL DR. It is a physical standby here and the maximum performance mode. So now we can start the recovery mode here. And for this, we have a command alter database recover manage standby database using the current log file so my mrp will be started here so we have configured a standby database for us and let's see how it works how things are going to happen here so coming back to my stand, uh, the production database here So we can have this, uh, we have the ORCL database here, which is in the read-write mode, and it is the primary side. And on the on the uh, standby side, we can see the database in the mounted mode, right? Okay, so let's see what is the archive on the product, production side. So we have a maximum sequence of uh, 299 running on the primary side. So let's do a thing, let's make a switch here. So once we make a switch of 299 here, you can see that the sequence number 300 is being generated now, and it will be shipped to the standby side. Let's make a few more switches here. Okay, so let's check on the standby side what's happening for the MRP. So here on this uh, standby side, we can see that MRP is waiting for 298. 
and we have the maximum archive supplied on the oh, sorry the maximum archive reach on the primary side is 305 so actually on the stem and stand by side we have to apply the archives from 298 to 305 so let's see where the archives are coming here so on the dr side my archives are going to the area Okay, still we have not received any of the archives to this place. Okay, let me see. Okay, so the thing is that the database is mounted mode. Okay, that's not a problem here. Just give two, three more minutes for the archives to reach this location. We have the required things on the standby side. It takes some time from the from, for the primary to send those data here. Okay, okay, so it's coming up here. As you can see, it's coming up here. On the right side of the, of the standby, you can see that the archives are being applied here. So Going back to my folder on the, the archive should be there. I'm going to this folder here. So just a few minutes ago, we didn't see any of the files here. So it should be visible here. Okay, so now you can see that the archives are coming up on my standby sites and they are being applied using the MRV process. So let's do the thing again. So the maximum archive is 306. Let me do a few switches here. Switch one, switch two, switch three. And when we will look in the archives folders, we will see that archives are coming here. So now 307, 308, 309 have reached on my standby side. And when we check the MRP process, so MRP has applied the latest 30. 310 here. Okay. So we can say that we have configured our standby. Okay. So the standby, this is the standby. So okay, now let's test a few things to check here. So test number one is that that I will be doing is that right now, as if you've seen that DP, my database is actually in the mount mode, right? It is not open. It's not being where you cannot query this database. So the test one which I will be performing here is that we will open this standby database in read-only mode. We will be applying the database in the read-only mode, and um, the, it will be read read apply there. And I will be try to create a table on the primary side, and we will see that with, whether we can see that here or not. Right? Okay. So let's do one thing. Let's see what is the status for my primary site. Okay, so that's the OSCL read write, that's the primary database and the maximum performance mode. So let me create a table here. I have created a table before. Let me just stop this whether it is there or not. Okay, so I will create a table. I have created a table, my table test. Okay, and then I will insert some data into this and I will just commit it okay. and if I say select count star from my table so we can see one record here 
So now what we will do is we will be opening our database in the open mode. Okay, let's do that. So first of all, you have to cancel the MRP, which you have to cancel the recovery part. And for this, you have to alter database recover managed standby database cancel. So this way you are cancel, canceling the MRP, the, the managed recovery process. Okay. And then you will open the database, alter database open. So now you can see that previously the database, the standby database was in the mounted mode. Now it is in the read only mode. That means you can actually view the data that which is on the standby side. So now if you want to uh, check the counts of this table, we can easily check this on the standby side. Okay. And so I will insert a few more records here. I have inserted a few more records here. So I will be able to see all of them at this side. Select Oh, I'm not able to see them on the standby side. While on the primary side, you can see them that the count is four, five, while on the standby side, the count is only one. What could be the reason? And the reason is that the data from the primary side was not reaching to the standby side. And if it is reaching, it is not being applied on the standby side because there is a background process. So there's the MRP process which is being, which is being there to apply those data. So you have to uh, activate the MRP process. So let's start our MRP process. So simple command for that. This alter database, recover, manage, standby database, disconnect from session. So once you start this, all the data which is being coming to the standby will be applied on this. And then, okay, let me show you what is the status for my database here. It says read only with apply. And now if I will check the counts, it will increase. Now five. So I hope you understand the concept, how the standby is working. How uh, we can open that standard database in read only mode with apply activated and all those changes which are being done on the primary will be activated will come go, will come to the standby side okay so this was one test let's do a second test here as you know that the archives from the primary side are being coming to the standby side okay so let and, and there's a network in between and there is a password file which is responsible for the connection to happen and for the data to come. So let's assume that we don't have any password file on the standby server. So I'm performing a second test here. So I have my standby file, which is this or a PWD or CL. Let me remove this file. Okay. So I don't have the my password file here. Okay. So now what will happen? I will be try to create some more. Uh, I will try to do some more switch here. So let's see what is the maximum switch here. That's three zero nine. Let's check the maximum on my standby. That is three zero nine. So let's do some more switching here. So I have performed few switches on my primary side. So let's see here on the standby side, what's the status of that? It's 306 in here. Okay. Hmm. 
So in the next example, I'm trying to show you that if there is no standby file, if there is no password file on the standby, so how is that going to affect whether the archive will be copied to this area or not? So we are going to see this. Okay, so wait. It is not showing error as well as it has applied the sequence uh, at standby. It should not, no? Yeah. No, so That's normally it, 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 it error only when it tries to establish the connection again. So we have 316 here, okay? Let me just, and, uh, oh, okay, so let me switch, switch. Switch. So now on the primary side, as you can see, we have reached to the archive to 328, but on the standby side, we are not receiving the archives. So after 320, it is not coming up to this level. So we have need to check what's the problem here. Okay, we have said it just deferred. So let me enable it. Okay, so so 
as you can see here, I'm still not getting those archives here after 320. Okay, so the problem about is that we don't have the password file on the standby side. So what we need to do is we need to copy the password file from the prime D. So let me copy this on the prime D. So as you can see here, I'm copying my password file from the primary side to the standby side. And then I will need to just defer and again enable the destination to just pointing to my standby side. And as you can see that there is the access process which is being assigned for all those archives that are not here. Okay, so now you can see that all the archives from 320 have reached to my standby side. So we can see here that if there is no password file available on the standby, the archives from the standby will not come to the, I'm sorry, the archives from the primary will not come to the standby. So this is one of the major uh, problems that the people as a DBA faces. So it's for the newcomers, for all those newcomers DBA. If you're working in a standby environment and you see that you don't receive those files on the uh, standby side, um, problem can be of the missing standby data logs. Sorry, the missing of the um, password file. So you just need to copy the password file from the production to the standby. Okay, so as the way GP info. Okay, so I need to apply the, let's see what, what MRP is doing. So MRP is not activated here. So I need to apply it. So you just know recover, managed, standby, database, disconnect from session. This command will start the MRP, which will start applying the MRP on this place on the, on the standby side. You can see that it says media recovery log applied. Okay. And so the MRP, so it's applying the last P31, which we can check confirm on the standby side. Okay, so P30 was the maximum here. Okay. One important thing I just want to tell you here is this, that we have, <clears throat> so you can use this view, which is X log buffer underscore read history, and which will help you to improve the performance of the standby, right? As you can see here, this is this column, second column shows me the buffer sizes. What is my log buffer size? It will show you this. So I can say show uh, meter log buffer. In my case, my log buffer value is 7624K, which is here, which is the current one. And as you can see, my performance is good. So from this table, from this Thing we can see sometimes there is a performance issues the data is not being copied or moving to the standby in a in a seamless manner so you need to increase the size of your log buffer so you can use this query for in your in your, in your um, test environments or in your production environments to see what is the status of this so i hope you have understood about the um, standby how it works how things coming up here okay we have shown you all those things that there was a log writer process there is a lns process there is a rfs process there's the mrp process so we have tried to understand all those background processes how they are working how the data is being copied here what things are important so we have understood everything so thank you you can just put down your questions in the chat box and uh, I will try to answer them and I am also working on my last session that I did on the patching part. I'm working on that also because I had uh, received multiple questions from multiple people and so I'm working on that session again for the uh, patching part. 
and hope to see you in the upcoming session that is the deep dive too. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, I can see a few questions here. What's real time apply? And uh, okay, uh, if you have a lack of one hour, then how can I sync my standby database? Lavinda is asking me this question. Okay, new features in 19C. Shagosta, yeah, I'm Shagosta. I'm just working on that. So in my next sessions, I will try to cover up more things. I will try to cover up, cover up the logical standby. I will try to cover up a big gap using the Arman incrementals. How you can cover up those big big gaps here? We have an algorithm incremental backups. We can apply those things. Madhuri, you can receive these uh, videos on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that. Thank you, Fazan. Uh, Narsima, which one is the best mode? Uh, okay, the best mode will be maximum performance. Because here the primary is not affected by the standby. It does not matter. It does not wait for the acknowledgement in this part. So it will keep on shipping the data to the standby and it will keep on working on the primary side. So um, maximum performance is a good option to choose. Nasim, I hope I have answered your question. Okay, guys, thank you, sirs, and see you on the next sessions. Till then, take care. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks for your participation. And also, guys, please register for our upcoming session on SQL Giant. You can find the registration link in the go to charts.